Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to go through how you can unlock all 25 legendary Pokemon in the Indigo Disc and where you'll be able to catch them in Paldea. <laughs> So when you come to the end of the Indigo Disc and you finish up your game in Area Zero, you'll see the end credits and you'll come back to the Blueberry Academy where you'll start a conversation with Briar. Throughout this dialogue, she'll tell you about a man in a suit that's in the entrance to the Blueberry Academy that would like to talk to you. After you finish this conversation, come to the entrance and turn to your left and you'll be able to see this man who she was referring to. This person is called Snacksworth and he tells you that he's a well-traveled man, visited multiple regions and had a lot of experience encountering legendary Pokemon. He proposes an offer to you where if you complete a set number of blueberry quests, he will give you in return snacks that will attract these specific legendaries. Now there are 25 legendary Pokemon available throughout this side quest with Snacksworth with, which means you're going to have to complete a lot of blueberry quests. The basic premise with how this works is for every 10 blueberry quests that you complete, you'll get one legendary snack at random from Snacksworth, which then unlocks that legendary for you to go and catch in Paldea. But the caveat to this is there is only going to be 13 legendaries available for you to unlock in your game if you're doing this solo. And these 13 Pokemon that are available will depend on the version of the game that you've got. So if we hop over to Cerebi, we've got a really nice breakdown here of the Pokemon that are available in each version of the game through solo quests. As you can see in Scarlet, you're going to be able to get Raikou, Entai, Suicune, Ho-Oh, -Oh, Latios, Groudon, Reshiram, Solgaleo and Glastria. And they're all through doing solo quests. You're also going to get, regardless of the game version that you've got, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres and Kubfu as well. So they're always going to be available to both Scarlet and Violet players. And then the split happens across both versions for the legendaries that are available through just solo quests. Now by solo quests we mean just going into the terrarium in your game you don't need to join anyone online and you're just completing blue requests on your own. Now after this there are going to be 12 remaining legendary Pokemon that you're still going to have to unlock but you're only going to be able to unlock these Pokemon through completing group quests. Group quests are only able to be complete when you form a union circle with other players online in the terrarium and you complete a set number of blueberry quests to get those group quests which are the yellow or golden colored ones where you all have to complete them together so if you're a scarlet player and you've unlocked all nine of these exclusive solo quest pokemon already and you want the violet solo quest pokemon which are going to be lugia latias kyogre Abalion, Terrakian, Verizian, Zekrom, Lunala and Spectria, then you're going to have to do nine group quests in your game as Scarlet player to unlock these through Snacksworth. And vice versa for Violet players that want the Raikou, Entai, Suicune, Ho-Oh, Latios, Groudon, Reshiram, Solgaleo and Glastria, you're going to have to do nine group quests in your game to unlock these Pokemon in your copy of Pokemon Violet. And both versions of the game are going to have to do at least three group quests to unlock Rayquaza, Curum, and Necrozma that aren't available through completing any solo quests at all. So to get the full set of 25 legendaries, you're going to have to complete 130 Blueberry quests in your game solo. That will unlock the base 13 that are available to your game version. And then on top of that, you're going to have to go online with friends or people that you know online and do 12 group quests to then speak to Snacksworth. It will then reward you the specific snack for those remaining legendaries that you're missing. So just to be crystal clear, you're going to have to complete 130 blueberry quests solo in the terrarium. And then you're going to have to do 12 group quests on top of that and when you've done all of those blueberry quests come back to snacks with speak to them and by doing everything that we've just outlined here you're going to be able to lock all 25 legendary snacks through Snacksworth to then go and find these legendary Pokemon in Paldea. Of course, you can do this one at a time. So you can do 10 quests and come speak to Snacksworth. Get a random snack of a legendary Pokemon that's available to you in your game. 
then go and find this legendary Pokemon and do a slow burn like that. There is no rush to doing this. If you're like me though, I've went and got all of the snacks all in one go and then hunted all of the legendaries all in one go. So it just depends how you would like to approach this. Now some prereqs before we go into the locations of where all of these legendary Pokemon are. The majority of these legendary Pokemon are all going to be set to level 70. So pretty high level Pokemon as you would imagine for legendary Pokemon. The only exception to this is going to be Kubfu because it is a pre-evolved legendary Pokemon and it will be at level 30. They're all going to have very low catch rates. They are very, very annoying to catch. And I'm presuming all of you probably don't have 25 Master Balls lying around either. So this is going to be a pretty difficult task for you to do. I would recommend getting a false swipe user that has a status condition move alongside it. That's going to boost the odds of being able to catch these Pokemon a lot easier. If you're using a false swipe user, though, there are a couple of caveats to that as well. There are a few Pokemon available to us throughout this quest that do have recoil damaging moves. There is going to be Solgaleo. It does have access to Flare Blitz and Wild Charge, both recoil causing moves. So if you get them down to one HP and they use any of those attacks, it will knock themselves out. There is also Glastria as well. It has access to Double Edge. So with those Pokemon in particular, you're going to want to make sure that you do save before you go into the battle itself. I would recommend saving before you go into any of these legendary battles because of the catch rates alone. You might get to the point where these Pokemon end up struggling and they knock themselves out and if you lose them like that it's kind of annoying so if you just have the save there you can just restart your game and go back into the battle and attempt it again i had a number of times when i was going up against kyoga that was probably the most difficult and i had to reset on it about five or six times because it ended up struggling and i just couldn't catch it in the ball that i was trying to get it in and no it wasn't a beast ball either but if you've got a false swipe user, it will help you immensely. And obviously a false swipe user with a sleep or a status condition move. I've been using Breloom. It's been perfect. It's got false swipe and 100% accurate sleep move in Spore. And also back up to that, I've used Gallade as well with False Swipe and Hypnosis. Another False Swipe user I have got in my party as well is Hisuian Decidueye. It has got the ability Scrappy and it has the move False Swipe. Scrappy allows normal type Pokemon to hit ghost type Pokemon because you're going to be going up against Lunala and also Spectria, which are both ghost type Pokemon. It means you've got a way to weaken them without having to throw balls at them at full HP. Make sure you're stocked up on potions, on revives, and most importantly, Pokeballs. You're going to need a bunch of Pokeballs to catch these Pokemon. Quick balls are probably your best shot when you first enter the battle give you the best chances of a, a better catch rate and after that then you can use something else if you're not too fussy about what pokeball you'd like to catch these pokemon in the other thing to mention as well with these legendary pokemon is normally when we have legendary pokemon in a pokemon game they are guaranteed to have at least three perfect ivs so ivs that are all set to 31 they'll be random across the six stats but this isn't the case with any of the legendaries that we'll be featuring in today's video. The IVs are going to be completely random with no guaranteed perfect IVs. Now, in some situations, this makes it a lot easier for soft resetting for zero speed IVs or zero attack IVs. If you're a competitive player, if you want a Glastria with a zero speed IV, this is going to make it a lot easier than it has been in previous games where you had to kind of combat against those three perfect IVs that you are always guaranteed. This is not the case going forward. So for those of you that were interested in that, the IVs for all of these legendary Pokemon are going to be completely random when you catch them. And the final thing to note as well, all of these legendary Pokemon, I'm sure you already know about it, but I will just let you know in case you don't, they are all shiny locked. So none of these legendary Pokemon that we feature in today's video will be available in their shiny forms so don't save in front of them thinking you can soft reset that the shiny will eventually appear it will not but i do recommend saving in front of them because of the low catch rates that you're going to have with these pokemon and for the reasons that we've already discussed in this video so starting off from the top once you've spoken to snacksworth and you've unlocked all of the 25 snacks available for these legendary pokemon in your game the first one we're going to show the location of is going to be Articuno. All these legendary Pokemon are going to be in Paldea as well, not in Kitikami, not in the Terrarium, just solely in Paldea. The first location that we're going to head to is Montenevera. 
and we're going to be heading to the west of the town to the mountainside as you can see here outlined on your map just fly to montenevera and then you want to use your ride pokemon to head over to this direction and this is exactly where you're going to see Articuno on your map just on the side of this cliff edge again just make sure you save in front of it before you start the battle and for this quest I am going to be catching all of the legendary Pokemon in luxury balls so if you're doing the same and catching all of the legendary Pokemon available in Scarlet and Violet in a specific ball do let me know down below what ball you'll be catching your legendary Pokemon in so this is the first one Articuno we're moving on to the next one which is going to be Zapdos and we're going to be going specifically to the lighthouse on the Poco path so this is very near the start of your playthrough. You're going to be heading to the lighthouse where we had the encounter with Arvin. And what you want to do is go inside the lighthouse, up the ladders and towards the back. And you'll see the Zapdos kind of hanging out here. And this is where you encounter Zapdos. Again, like I've said before, make sure you drop a save. The catch rates for these Pokemon are very difficult. But this is the location on the map. And this is where you're going to be able to get yourself one of the legendary birds in Zapdos. The final legendary bird Moltres is going to be located in the Acedo Desert. You want to head to the Acedo Desert Watchtower and then go north of this towards the top of this ridge. This is where the Moltres will be located. Again, make sure you drop a save before you encounter the Moltres. Then proceed into the battle. If you've got one, utilize your false swipe user and status condition user to max out those catch rates and good luck with the catch. But that is the three legendary birds and how you get Articuno, Zapdos and Moltres in Paldea. Once you've unlocked the snack for Lugia, you'll be able to find it off the shore of the North Province Area 1 on a very small island north in the sea. And when you come to this island as marked here on the map, you'll see that Lugia will be kind of floating, bobbing in the sea, waiting for the encounter. Ho-Ho, Lugia's counterpart will be located on a cliff edge to the west of Alfernada town in this location. It's probably easier if you fly east from South Province area for Watchtower fly point, but you can fly from Alfernada town as well, but it will be located here on this cliff edge and pretty easy to spot when you fly over it. Next up is Raikou and we're going to be going to North Province Area 1 and it's east of the Ice Rhine Shrine on the side of the slope here. And again, it'll be pretty easy to spot when you come over. This is the location on the map and this is how you can get yourself Raikou. Entai is north of Lavincia and it is in these cliffy areas. It's located here on the map. You will have to travel to this point north from Lavincia if you travel here. And this is where you're going to be able to find Entai and it'll be beside all of this scaffolding around this cliff like edge. Complete the trio, Suicune will be based in Lake Casaroya. It will be located on the smaller island in the middle of the lake, which is just to the west of the bigger island that you kind of notice here on the map. It's located right here, but Suicune, easy to spot again. Again, drop a save before you encounter it, just to make sure if anything goes wrong in the battle itself, you can just reset and come back into it without having to worry about respawning it anytime later. Groudon is going to be located in the underground caves to the east of Alfernada town. It will be located here on your map. You're going to have to come into this cave entrance here and then follow my path that we're taking and that will lead you to Groudon. It is located, like I say, here on the map, but it is a little bit confusing because this is going to be underground, not overground. Just bear that in mind, but this is where you're going to be able to catch Groudon. Groudon's counterpart Kyogre is on the opposite end of the map and it will be in the north area. If you head to the fly point Gracia Stones then it is just off the shore of this area. If you don't have this fly point then you want to just head to the north part of Lake Casaroya like we've got marked on the map here and then head out into the ocean and that's where you're going to find Kyogre. It's probably worth also just Unlocking the fly point to the Gracia stones as well while you're here because it is a useful fly point if you have it unlocked for later or anything else that you do in the games. To complete the Hoenn trio, we are going to be going after Rayquaza next and Rayquaza is located on this edge of the Area Zero crater. Very easy to find, very easy to get to 
and going to be very easy to spot when you get up to the edge of this area zero crater again this is the map point for Rayquaza so you'll have no trouble finding it if you just follow along with this guide Latias is next and it will be located in South Province Area 4. If you just follow a westerly path from your house where you start the game, you'll see a coastal area just below the South Province Area 4 Watchtower fly point and Latias is located on this beach area. So located here on your map, you want to just come down to it and like I say, Latias will be on the shoreline here for you ready to catch. When you've got this specific snack for this legendary, Latios will be available to catch in the North Province Area 2. It will just be south of the Fury Falls Fly Point or the Fire Scroud Shrine if you've got either of those unlocked. If neither unlocked, then the North Province Area 2 Fly Point. It will be south of there located here on your map. When you come to this meadow area with a lake in the middle, this is where Latios will be located. Again, just drop a save before you start this one, in case anything goes wrong, and this is how you're gonna be able to get Latios in your game. Next up is Reshiram. If you come to Zapico East, you wanna head south from this point here and to the top of this big ridge where there is a waterfall, and right next to this, you'll find Reshiram. Pressure room located here on the map again as always drop a save just to be safe in case anything goes wrong and good luck trying to get this fire dragon legendary next we are going to be going for zekrom it is going to be located in the south province area 5 if you come to the south province area 5 watchtower you'll just fly directly south from this point onto the top of this big mountainous area here and Zekrom can be found exactly here as you can see on your map again Zekrom is going to be an electric and dragon type legendary Pokemon pretty strong very cool from the black and white Unova series and something that is worth getting in your game looks really great in Scarlet and Violet as well again like I've said make sure you drop a save before you go into the encounter and this is where you can get and catch yourself Zekrom. Kurum is going to be located next to the Dali Zappa passage. Once you come to this point you'll see a big embankment in front of you. You want to head up this path and when you do take the first left. This will take you on a path that will bring you to a cave system and when you come inside the cave system drop down over the edge and you'll jump right in front of where Kurum is located. Again, drop a save before you enter the battle with Kurum. And this is the exact location on the map where you'll be able to get this Ice and Dragon Pokemon. Next up, we're going to be going for Cobalion. And this is going to take us to the Fury Falls checkpoint again right here. This is where Cobalion is located. If you haven't got the Fury Falls checkpoint, then just fly to the North Province Area 2. And you'll be able to get to it just as quick. It'll just be south of that location. Very easy one to find when you get to this spot. You're going to see Cobalion waiting for you just here. I say it is very close to the pokemon center in north province area too but you're going to be want to be located right here on your map next we're going after terrakion you want to head over to the pokemon league and then up to this area here it is going to be east of north province area one watchtower so this is probably the quickest way to get to this one but it is up on this ledge right here and as you can see this is where terrakion is located and like I said, just north of the Pokemon League and then west, to west province area one watchtower. So this is exactly where you want to be coming to grab yourself Terrakion in Paldea. And next we're going to go for Verizion. So we're going to be going up to the Tang Tree Thicket here. And it's going to be in this location right in the corner here where we're going to be finding Verizion. So the quickest way to fly to it is probably from the north province area one and just fly across from this way. You can go to the one just out of the front of the tank tree thicket but I feel like this way is closer and you can see here Verizion right in the corner over here and like I said is in the tank tree thicket but right in the corner it'll be here on your map as you can see quickest way is probably from east province area three or you can fly south from the north province area one to get to this 
corner of the tang tree thicket and that's where you're going to find verizian and as always you want to just drop a save in front of the legendary just in case it goes wrong the catch rates aren't the best remember and then when you're ready just encounter it next up we'll be going for sogaleo and this is a really easy one to get you're going to just fly over to the pokemon league and right on top of the pokemon league sogaleo will be waiting for you you've got the fly feature it is very easy to get up on but if not you just run up the cliffs and then you can just hop over and glide down from that edge there but once you get here, Sogaleo will be in the center here, ready and waiting. Just drop a save before you go in on this one, and then you can go in and challenge Sogaleo. Okay, next up, Sogaleo's counterpart, Lunala, and we're going to be heading towards Porto Marinada, and we're going to be heading up to this area right here, which is just on this ridge on the coastal land. So Porto Marinada is the location, probably the closest fly point to this one. We just want to be heading north from this fly point. As you can see, as soon as we land, Lunala is waiting for us just on the cliff edge here. And again, once before you take it on, just drop a save and then you'll be able to jump into this and take this Pokemon on. Next up is Necrozma to complete the trio. And we're going to be heading up to the Grand Blight Shrine area, which is north of Lake Casaroya. And the spot that we'll be going to is here. If you don't have the Grand Blight Shrine unlocked as a fly point, you can use the Gracia Stones and fly west to this location or from the center of Lake Casaroya and head north. And as you can see, when you get to this location, Necrozma is just hanging out on the edge of this cliff here. You can see the lake casseroya in front of us to the side of us there and it is this location bring it up on the map exactly where we put a fly point and you can get a good idea of where we are north of lake casseroya we can go in and encounter it next up is going to be kubfu this is a really easy one if you've got this fly spot unlocked it is going to be at fury falls if you don't have it unlocked then you will be going to the north province area too and then heading south from here towards the Fury Falls. As soon as we fly into this fly point, then you are going to see the Kubfu waiting right where we zone in. If we just turn around here, you can see the Kubfu is right behind us. And this is the first time it's going to be available to catch wild in the games, which is very cool. And one of my favorite Pokemon, obviously, it does evolve into Urshifu. Two forms, very strong. If you're a VGC player, then this is definitely something that you're going to want to have to pick up when you've got the opportunity to. So again, once you get here, just drop a save, get your Pokemon ready, and then you can go in to approach and try and get this Kubfu. And the next Pokemon is going to be Glastria, and we are going to be heading to this area right about over here. We're going to be heading to this area right about here. It is just south of the Glacido Gym. So you want to be heading to the Glacido Gym and then heading south from there down the mountain. And you should be able to find Glastria pretty easily. And here we are. Here is the Glastria on this side of the Glacido Mountain. Like I said, just south of the Glacido Gym. You want to just head down the mountain here and you will be located here. This is where we are on the map. This is where you're going to find Glastria. And as always, when you've got your Pokemon ready, it's going to be a good idea to drop a save in front of it. And then you will be able to encounter it and catch yourself a Glastria. And finally, the last legendary that we need to catch is going to be Spectria. We want to head to the Dali Zappa Passage and then we want to go to these ruins right here. And as you can see, there's Spectria waiting to encounter us. And you can see on the map exactly where we are. We are just west of the Dali Zappa Passage. And this is Spectria, the last legendary that we need to pick up for this quest so that is every location of all 25 legendary pokemon that you're going to be able to get in pokemon scholar and violet through the indigo disc you've got all of the legendary birds here you've got lugia ho o raikou entai suicune groudon kyoga rayquaza then latias and latios you've got zekrom reshiram kiram then kobalion terrakian and verizian solgaleo lunala and necrozma then you get yourself a Kubvu. I'm also going to be able to get yourself a Glastria and Spectria. And I've caught every single one of them in a Luxury Ball, which is pretty nice. It was a bit challenging to do. The catch rates are really difficult. And this did definitely take me a long time to do to catch all of them. 
but these are all the locations where you can get them for yourself in your own game we went through how you can unlock all of the snacks as well through snacks worth getting the snacks is probably going to be the most time consuming part of this whole process but definitely worth doing in your game to get these legendary pokemon especially the ones that are pretty exclusive that we've not really had too much access before we've got kubfu spectra and glastria and of course kubfu this is the first time that we'll be able to catch it in a different Pokeball other than a Pokeball, which is all it was available in from Scarlet and Violet through the Crown Tundra when we originally got it introduced to the game. So really nice way for you to get it in something different if you want for your collection. But again, all very nice Pokemon. Just a shame that they are shiny locked. There is the plus that they don't have those maximum three guaranteed IVs to make it easier for soft resetting for zero IVs in either speed or attack if you want them to be optimized for competitive play. So they are some nice features, but again, it would have been nice to go out and shiny hunt these legendaries in Scarlet and Violet. Maybe we'll get something that we can go and shiny hunt for in an event later down the line. But that is everything for today's video. I hope you found all this information helpful. Good luck with your legendary hunts. Let me know what legendaries you're going for, what balls you're planning to catch them in. And if you've got any questions about anything that we've covered, do let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to each and every one of you. Thank you once again, friends. If you have enjoyed today's video, got any value out of it, please drop a like. Do consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with all of our pokemon scarlet and violet content and i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye